Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to sit down and film a video for you guys all about the first trimester of my pregnancy. I currently am 22 weeks pregnant and I thought it would be fun to film a video for you guys now that I'm out of the first trimester to go back to that time and tell you guys all about my experiences, my symptoms, and the must-haves that you will most likely need for your first trimester of pregnancy. Before we jump into the video, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit that bell notification so that you're notified every Wednesday when I upload a new video. Okay, and with that, let's go ahead and jump right on into this video all about the first trimester. Okay, so I first off just want to start by saying everyone's experiences are going to be different. Everyone's first trimester and actually pregnancy entire pregnancy in itself is going to be different. They're going to differ from each other depending on the person. So this is just my experiences and what I went through and yours may be totally different. So I would love to hear, share in the comments below your experiences with your first trimester if they are anything like mine, because I would love to know. So first things first, we, my husband and I conceived on October 5th of 2018 and my symptoms began on October 23rd. So about two and a half weeks pregnant is when my symptoms first started. Started. Now that doesn't mean that at October 23rd I knew I was pregnant. I definitely didn't, but I did notice some changes in my body. So because of the changes that I was noticing, I then on October 27th took a pregnancy test and the pregnancy test came back positive. I actually took three that night and all three came back positive. So I we conceived October 5th and by October 27th I had a positive pregnancy test. I had missed my period by like three, I think three to five days. I don't exactly remember and for some reason and I didn't write it down, but I did miss my period. And so that is why I took a pregnancy test because I don't have a super regular period, but I do know that it's always between one to two days. And so anything after that is a little weird for my body. So the first thing for me was that I had minor cramps in my lower stomach. And honestly with this, I just thought it was period cramps because I don't have really bad period cramps. I have pretty small ones. And so I had small cramping and I just thought I was going to start my period. But that was the first thing that my body did with pregnancy. The first thing was the minor cramps. And that basically is just the egg fertilizing and going into your body, going into your body. That sounds weird. <laughs> But basically when the egg is implanting into your body and creating the baby, that is why you have those minor cramps. Next up was insomnia. I could not sleep for the life of me. I was waking up every hour, tossing and turning for probably a few weeks. Um, my sleep was really bad. And then after that, it went to great. It's kind of through pregnancy, gone through different spurts of being very bad and then it's really good and then it's really bad again. But that was the second thing that uh, was a symptom for me was ins insomnia. I was not able to sleep well at all through the night. Next up was a sensitivity to smell. I started to get sick to my stomach at certain smells. And by this point, I already had a feeling I was pregnant. Um, by sensitivity to smell, I was like, okay, I think this is around the time that I took the pregnancy test because things that would never make me feel sick before made me feel sick. Now, I was very lucky and never had to go through the bad morning sickness. I know that some women go through very terrible morning sickness and sickness throughout their entire pregnancy. I did have very bad nausea, but that didn't hit me till a little bit later in the later weeks of my first trimester. But I will say that morning sickness didn't really affect me a whole lot. Mine was more um, nausea and it was more towards the end of the day than the beginning of the day. But I was sensitive to smell probably weeks four through 12. I was very sensitive to a lot of smells. Actually the worst one that I still, I'm now 22 weeks pregnant and I still can't stand, is the smell of my husband's body wash. It's like a minty berry almost smell, but like very masculine. But for some reason there is something about that body wash that makes every hair on my body stand up and it makes me think I'm gonna puke every time I smell it. After that, the most fun one of them all came along. And this is something that I feel like not a lot of women tell you about. I feel like there's a lot of things about pregnancy that women don't really talk about. Um, and this is definitely one of them and it is constipation. And I know that that's kind of an awkward topic, but it is real with pregnancy. Okay, so the next symptom is something that I feel like every woman goes through with pregnancy and that is sore breasts. My breasts actually started to get a little bit sore, um, kind of in the very beginning actually of my pregnancy, like week three, but I didn't think anything of it because just like with the minor cramps, when my period is about to start, 
that's what happens. I get sore breasts, I get minor cramps, and so I thought I was just gonna start my period. So it was very small though, it wasn't like super sore breasts, and over time it definitely increased. Like by weeks eight and nine, it was really bad and they were very sore. So if your breasts are sore, girl, you're probably pregnant. Okay, and then I touched on this a little bit earlier, but next up is nausea. My nausea got very, very bad around week seven. Um, I, I wrote down here that week seven was the worst week of pregnancy for me by far. I remember for an entire week, I laid on the couch. Like, of course, when I wasn't at work, I was laying on the couch at home. I had all the lights off, couldn't have any lights on, and was just like watching Netflix, eating saltine crackers, chugging ice water, and taking a lot of Dramamine because I felt so nauseous and dizzy and just so sick. It was the most miserable thing. Week seven was the most miserable thing. I think I honestly slept for probably two days straight two to three days straight. It was just on and off napping, like sleeping for four hours, awake for an hour, sleeping for three hours, awake for two hours. Like it was on and off napping because my body felt totally terrible. And then I also was like burping and belching a lot. I had a lot of like gas and air built up in my stomach. I noticed myself burping all the time and that's not very normal for me. And so that definitely was a symptom of my pregnancy. I was burping all the time and it was kind of like really gross, but like I couldn't stop it. Okay, and then the last symptom that I wrote down for the first trimester of pregnancy for me was being very sensitive and emotional. And this one, I don't know if every woman um, experiences this and maybe some women experience this more into the second or third trimester of their pregnancy, but I definitely with second trimester have had more mood swings, I would say. In the first trimester, it wasn't it wasn't really mood swings. I just felt super sensitive and people would say or do things and it would hurt me more than it should have and I would take it to heart a lot more than it needed to be. And so like the smallest, simplest things would just like make me so sad and I would go home and cry about it, but for no reason. Like it wasn't someone else's fault and they weren't actually even really rude or weren't even trying to be rude, but for some reason I was so sensitive that it just hurt when people would say like the most simple things. And along with that came the feeling of being lonely. So. As some of you know, my sister is actually pregnant with me. She is one week behind me, and then one of my good friends, Peyton, is also pregnant as well, and she's three weeks ahead of me. So it has been amazing having two people very close to me that are going through kind of the same things at the same time that I am. But outside of that, I have a very large group of girlfriends who are amazing friends to me, but they aren't pregnant, and they aren't going through pregnancy. And so because of that, I went through probably like a whole week or maybe more of just this feeling of loneliness and just this feeling of like, I feel like because I'm pregnant, people like feel weird around me or they feel like they shouldn't invite me to things because they think, oh, she probably is at home like feeling sick or at home napping. And so I got really in my head for a while there and I felt super lonely and like, I almost like got to the point where I felt like nobody wanted to spend time with me or hang out with me and it was a really dark weird place and like I said it, it, it probably came along from the weird sensitivity of pregnancy that it just messes with your emotions but I went through some real loneliness and not I don't think anyone really knows that not many people know that but just so you guys know, I'm just talking about it now because I don't think that a lot of people do talk about it. And it is definitely a symptom of pregnancy. If you do feel super lonely while you're pregnant, you're not alone. You're not the only one. I definitely went through a season of loneliness and very, being very emotional and very sensitive. So with that being said, I just wanna say if you are watching this and you are not currently pregnant and you have a friend that's pregnant, make sure you are inviting them to hang out. Make sure that you are including them in things because you may not even realize it and they may not vocalize it, but they may be feeling super lonely. And just because you feel like you can't relate to them in a certain way because they are pregnant and you're not, doesn't mean that you shouldn't invite them to hang out because there were times for me that like, groups of friends would get together and it was really sad that I wasn't invited because of course my sensitivity was heightened and so my friends weren't hanging out without me to hurt my feelings at all but it just was sad for me because I just thought to myself they probably feel like they can't relate to me like I just talk about pregnancy now and they don't know anything about it and so they feel like they can't relate and so they don't want to hang out with me 
So if you're someone that's not pregnant that has a pregnant friend, invite them to hang out a lot because I'm sure they would really appreciate it. Okay, so that is all the symptoms that I felt and went through in my first trimester of pregnancy. Now, I felt all those symptoms up to week 12, and then once I hit week 13, which I think second trimester starts week 13 or 14, but when I hit week 13, everything started to change and a whole new set of symptoms began. So I will do another video for you guys all about the second trimester and all the symptoms that I have gone through so far in my second trimester. I'll probably actually do it when I'm in my third, that way I can give you everything about the second trimester. But next up, I wanted to share with you guys some must-haves for your first trimester of pregnancy. Okay, so the first must-have for pregnancy for your first trimester is peppermint essential oil. This was such a huge thing for me. I actually had two people give me two different little small peppermint essential oils because I'm not super into essential oils. I don't buy essential oils, but being pregnant, they have come in so handy, let me just say. I have started to love every every essential oil. It has been so amazing. But peppermint was so nice because I could put a little bit on my wrists or on my finger or like anywhere on my hand and during the day I would just sit there and sniff the peppermint and it really helped with my nausea and my feeling of sickness throughout the day. Next up is chewing mint gum. I was constantly chewing on mint gum in my first trimester because something about peppermint just gets rid of any type of nausea that I was feeling. Next up is ice cold water. Now, now that I'm in my second trimester, I just drink mostly room temperature water, but in my first trimester, I craved ice cold water and it it almost like felt so much better drinking because it was so cold and I was so nauseous that just drinking something cold made me feel so much better. Another must have is bland foods. Now I ate the most bland foods in my first trimester. I ate a lot of oatmeal, a lot of toast, a lot of cereal, and a lot of McDonald's. The next must have is a super glamorous one, and that is stool softeners, laxatives, and prune juice. Woohoo! The funnest thing to talk about. So like I said, one of the symptoms that I had was constipation, and I actually took stool softeners and laxatives, and they didn't really help me. I feel like they didn't really help me, so that's why I put prune juice on here, because I think the only thing that really helped for me was drinking a big glass of prune juice. That really helped to get things moving and get things working. So definitely a must have for first trimester, get yourself some stool softener, stool softener, stool softeners, some laxatives and some prune juice. Now the most obvious must have of them all is prenatals. Make sure you are taking your prenatals. I actually started with one kind of prenatal and it was a gummy, like chewable gummy prenatal and you had to take two every morning. And I took that up until the second trimester of my pregnancy when I hit second trimester. And so I looked into some other, some different prenatals and I ended up getting, um, I wanna say this one's called like prenatal one or something like that, but it's like vegan, gluten-free, super good for you. And it's humongous pills that you have to swallow once a day. And it's very hard and I gag and choke every time, but I do like it a lot better than the chewable prenatals that I was taking prior to. I also took a lot of long, semi-warm showers. I didn't have them hot because I noticed that if I took a really hot shower that my heart would beat really fast and I would get really lightheaded and just feel sick. So I took a lot of kind of cool showers and would just sit on the tub, on the ground, in the shower forever. And it was the most amazing thing with like my lavender candle burning. Ugh, goals. Goals. I also ate a lot of saltine crackers, so make sure when you're curled up in bed with your cozy blankets, you have your saltine crackers and your ice cold water because those will get you through the night. Like I said previously, I also took Dramamine there for probably two, probably two weeks. Um, I had Dramamine with me at all times and I would just take it, of course, as like the bottle said, I wouldn't just pop them back like M&Ms, but I took it as the bottle recommended and it actually really helped with my motion sickness and my nausea. So I would absolutely recommend taking Dramamine. Now, of course, ask your doctor before you take any Dramamine. My doctor was okay with it and said that it would be totally fine. So I recommend Dramamine, but definitely ask your doctor before you take it. Okay, so the next few things are just some fun things that I had during my first trimester that I still have that I would totally recommend having 
in pregnancy. So the first one is to get the What to Expect app. And it's a pregnancy app on your phone that you can get. And I have absolutely loved it. Every week it gives you a new video and it's this sweet lady and she's explaining everything about what's going on in your body that week and what's happening to the baby that week. And they also tell you the size of the baby, like how it goes from a blueberry and then one week it's a lime and then it's an orange. Like right now mine is a bell pepper. So my little baby is, which is kind of weird because last week she was a banana and I'm like, how did she go from a banana to a bell pepper? What? But it is a really fun app to have and I do just get so much joy when I do open it. Every Sunday I'll open it up and I get to see something new on the new size of my baby and I get to read all about what is happening in her little body that week. The next thing is two different books that I would highly recommend that I absolutely love. I haven't finished either of them yet, which I need to, but the first one is What to Expect When You're Expecting. Now this book has been around forever and I wouldn't have even gotten this book if it weren't for my mom buying me this book. She said that she read it when she was pregnant and so she had to get it for my sister and I now that we were pregnant because it literally it's like a thick book and it tells you everything that you'll need to know about pregnancy like literally it's almost like a dictionary or like a bible it's like a, the bible to pregnancy like it tells you everything you'll ever need to know so I haven't finished reading it yet but I should do that but like I'm not a huge reader so like maybe I'll just like listen to it on audible or something but I would highly recommend that book if you are a reader. And the next book is the book called Belly Laughs. And this one I believe is by Jenny McCarthy. I do have it somewhere, I don't know. I have it somewhere in my house. But this book is so hilarious. Like I said, I haven't finished this one either. I'm almost to the end of it. But this book is so funny and it is so relatable. And it goes through all the awkward and weird things of pregnancy for like weeks one through when you have the baby, like weeks 40. It tells you everything in the middle and between everywhere about pregnancy and it is so relatable and so hilarious and you absolutely have to check it out and get that book if you do not already have it. Okay, so the last must have for pregnancy would be this book right here, which I absolutely love. This one was actually a gift from my friend who is also pregnant, but this is called The Belly Book and it is by Amy Kraus Rosenthal. I think I said that right. But it's a really cute book and it is just, so it says right here on the front, a nine month journal for you and your growing belly. So this is just a journal where you can write down and keep all of the memories of your pregnancy from when you found out you were pregnant to when you had the baby. And it is just the cutest and the sweetest book. And every few weeks I will sit down and I will write in it and fill out all the things that I felt in the last few weeks and all the things that happened. And it's just so sweet to be able to read back on and look back on, especially once the baby is born. That way you have an entire book, an entire journal of your entire pregnancy. Okay, and then last thing I will say about the first trimester is make sure you enjoy dressing cute in your normal clothes for as long as you can because I am now at 22 weeks, like I've said multiple times, and I can no longer wear a lot of the clothes that I wore prior to being pregnant. So I am now officially popping and I can't fit into a lot of my clothes and I just don't feel cute in a lot of them. So while you're in your first trimester and you don't have a huge bump because in your first pregnancy, your first trimester you probably aren't going to start showing maybe at all I really was barely even showing at all um, in my first trimester I didn't really show until my second trimester so enjoy wearing the cute clothes that you have and the stuff that you already have at your home because you're probably gonna need to go out and buy some new stuff in your second trimester all in all I would say for me Pregnancy so far has been really enjoyable. The first trimester has definitely been the hardest and the second trimester has almost been a breeze. It has been so easy um, so far, but if you wanna know the symptoms that I've had in my second trimester, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna do a video here soon all about the second trimester and all the symptoms that I did feel and all the things that I went through and the must-haves for the second trimester of pregnancy. I hope that you guys can relate to some of these things that I went through in my first trimester and if you can, please let me know down below and also let me know if you had any symptoms that I didn't have if you experienced things that I didn't um, a lot of people probably go through really bad morning sickness and like puking and stuff like that so I know that that's pretty common I never puked I didn't puke a single time still haven't um, so I'm very lucky very blessed but any symptoms that you guys had that I did not have I would love to know so make sure you comment those down below so yeah that is everything that had to do with my first trimester of pregnancy I hope that you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and I love you guys and I will see you guys in the next one bye guys